Rosalind could just talk about what excites you, excites you about the job. Um, I think the history of uh, Saluki track and field is, is one that when you're in this profession, you know, um, you've heard uh, a lot of my mentors have come from this place. And so, you know, it's exciting to get a chance to come back and, and really continue the tradition. And so uh, for Coach Kill and, and, and staff to really feel uh, that I'm the right person for the job, it's exciting. You know, you, I understand you knew John Smith. How did you hear about the job? Um, I actually, uh, John Smith was a, a coach at Ohio State when I was a student athlete there. Uh, did a lot of my strength training, so as people say I survived John Smith. Um, but he was one that's really just kind of stayed with me through, um, you know, my career. He recommended me for my first sort of coaching position. As I've been back at where I am now at Ohio State, he's always called, checked in. He, He's texting me as I'm walking into the building, like, are you, are you on campus yet? So he's really just kind of um, kept track of, track of me without um, trying to tell me where I should go or, or, or what I should do, but really just supporting me. So, um, you know, I think when the opportunity came up, uh, his wife, Connie, I'm sure, made a call and said, hey, what do you think? And I thought, like, wow, that's, that's an awesome opportunity. You know, what have you done in your career to prepare to be a head coach? Um, that's a great question. For me, I've enjoyed doing sort of every step of this journey. I was a student athlete and I really like to learn. Even as a student athlete, I was a camp counselor. So it's like, how do I get to teach? How do I get to mold? Let me understand the sport. Um, I've been able to then go from sort of a, to a GA position where you just you learn. You're doing everything, all the behind the scenes uh, things that you know it takes to run a program that maybe as a student athlete you didn't realize. Um, was really important and then from there being able to to, to get some student athletes and really uh, get a chance to mold them and, and write my own program and, and then when I got back to Ohio State I became an assistant coach so now I'm, I'm full-fledged I'm in this profession and able to then become an associate head coach so I've really felt like I've uh, taken every step of the journey and really learned from it um, and so the natural progression was was the director of track and field and cross country position. Obviously, you know the, the, a little bit about the history of the program here, but um, you know with Olympians and, and championships, how do you plan on building on, on that success? Well, I think the name is already there, and so for me, I didn't go to school here. I didn't, but I know Saluki track and field, and so you know. For me, that's a big selling point. Reach back out to the alumni, get them excited about what you know we, we're trying to do next, and so really building on the name that's already here. I I, I don't plan to create anything new. Uh, I want to want to go with the tradition of the program and, and and build from there. So create the buzz from the alumni and the people that have come come through here and who are really excited about um, Saluki track and field. I'm sure Jerry will give you every asset you need to be successful, but coming from Ohio State, one of the top three, if not number one, largest athletic department to, to Carbondale, what do you think will be the biggest challenge for you? I'm, Coach Kill is a recruiter. I told him that every every step of the of you know of the uh, the hiring process, he really pursued me in a in a manner that uh, we were going to make track and build a priority. Uh, he was going to give me the resources and the people, and then he was going to surround me. And so the facilities are great. Um, the vision of the program and the vision of the athletic department is great. Uh, the history here is great. And so for him to come in and say that that I was a missing piece was really um, was really exciting for me because I could see and feel that this is an important important sport here at um, at Southern Illinois. So you know the challenges. Um, I think anywhere you go, you you got to come in and find out. What you're missing? How how do I fit? What are my strengths and weaknesses? And so I plan to, you know, get in probably in the next couple hours and, and start to figure all that out. But I I definitely don't think that um, you know there's anything that can't be done here. And for me, that's part of the challenge already. Did, did you recruit <coughs> mostly jumpers or a certain geographic area, or what kind of areas did you recruit at Ohio State? Well, I, I am a jumps and multis coach, but. Being, when I actually first got there, I was the field coach. So throwers, jumpers, vaulters, um, sprinters, hurdlers, I did a little bit of everything. Um, and being a multi-coach, you coach a little bit of everything. And so for me, um, my, my biggest recruiting tool has always been to go get talent. Um, wherever they are, wherever, whatever event they may be, go get talent 
uh, people who want to be here, people who fit kind of the, the vision of the program. And so, um, you know, there's no really certain thing I'm looking for. I'm looking for people that want to be here, who want to grow and get better and, and win. Do you still plan on coaching the, the multi season? I, I'm looking at that structure now, but yes, I mean, that's kind of, I was a long and triple jumper myself. I ran on some relays. I had a stint as a multi as well, so I've done a little bit of everything. That's definitely, um, the, the jumps are, are it, it's, it's dear to my heart. Uh, I'm a school record holder there at Ohio State in long and triple jump, and uh, just actually had a national champion in the men's long jump. So it's something that, actually I saw, he, he's, uh, I, I didn't get to go to London with him, but he's, um, he was second at the World Athletic Games. That's the first time they've ever had that, that meet. And so to see uh, student athletes that you coach performing on the world level is really exciting. And, and it's just an event that I've, I've done. My, my dad was a jumper and my mom was a jumper. So it's kind of, it, it's an event that's dear to me. But at the same time, you know, I also love track and field. So I'm, I'm able to coach a lot of different events and, and I want every student athlete that's here to be better. And so whatever event that, that I need to immerse myself in, I'm there. They have a long history of, of being competitive in international competitions. Have you had a lot of athletes you know, play overseas or it's, maybe it's, Olympics? Uh, I or? mean, track and field is it's, it's hit or miss in terms of just you know the professional realm. So I think that the biggest thing is being knowledgeable about international competition, what that means. Um, like I mentioned, John and Connie, they're really big to you know USA track and field and the professional side of the sport. So um, if if we have student athletes who want to pursue that, that we have the connections within our staff to make sure that they're able to do that. So um, you know some student athletes don't want to be a professional athlete, and that's fine. They want to come, they want to win conferences, they want to mark their name in Saluki history. Um, but then some do want to go on, and that's something that uh, for each student athlete will evaluate and will be able to, to help support them in that journey. You majored in human ecology. Can you tell me what that's about? <laughs> so funny enough, that's human ecology um, is child, early childhood development was kind of the specialization. I thought I wanted to go on and teach third grade and possibly be a child psychologist. And I tell my student athletes, I use that degree every single day when I'm with them, every single day. So a lot about development, a lot about life cycles, a lot about, you know, the progression of people. Um, and so for me, it sounds like a major in, you know, sciences, but that's what I've been able to really um, use in my coaching style is, is realizing that everyone comes from different backgrounds, everyone has different life cycles and progressions um, on the track and off the track. And so. Uh, meeting the student athlete where they are and trying to find out how to help them grow. Um, for me, that's where I've been able to actually use my degree uh, in, in this profession. Is this a good time to start, Rosalind, for a track coach recruiting? <laughs> it's just July. Is that late? Is uh, that I, I'm time? late. So I, it's actually, I, 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 before I came here, they said the first thing you're going to do is, is uh, you know, meet with media and be introduced and I say well the first thing I need to do is meet with compliance find out scholarship numbers and, and that sort of thing so I I'm a little in my mind I'm a lot behind which is a little, a little stressful for a track coach but um, to be honest when I leave here I have some phone calls to make and so um, ready to just get started you know I know it's early have you had any conversations with the assistants here you know the throws coach they're very fond of mm -hmm. Um, JC Lambert, have, they, have you had conversations with them about staying on? I so in in the in the recruitment of me, that was sort of um, my next step is the recruitment of JC. I think that you know I know from afar every throws coach that I've talked to in the country, uh, throws coach that I really respect, have told me like he's better than me. And so for me to hear that from some of the most renowned names in the throws community, um, Coach Kill called me and then I called him. So we talked, he was on his way to London, we talked, um, and, <clears throat> and so I do plan on retaining J.C. Lambert, yes, for sure. Um, as well as it, the rest of the staff, what I've uh, told them is that I'm going to open it up and, and just see where their strengths and weaknesses are and see, you know, if they feel they're fit for the, the vision of the program. And so I'll, I'll be evaluating that over the next few days, but uh, J.C. Is, is, is locked in. And what will you remember about your Ohio State days? Say that again. What will you remember about coaching in Ohio State? Oh boy, I I 
that it was a tough decision to leave and that that's been my second home um, <clears throat> I've spent 15 years of my life there um, created some fond memories met some awesome people but <clears throat> I think what I'm most excited about is that uh, my experience there has prepared me for this opportunity and so I'm really excited to be able to venture out and, and kind of show what I've learned as a Buckeye and the things that I've done and, and bring it here uh, and create and, and continue this tradition so um, you know the memories will always be there the people I mean it, it's it was almost surreal the amount of people once I told them you know I reached out my student athletes there yesterday and, and uh, there's a lot of tears in the airport. I probably look crazy sitting in the corner reading a lot of the text messages, but not only were they sad to see me go, but they were supportive because they know that, you know, this now broadens sort of, um, of my network of uh, Ohio State connected to, to the Saluki tradition. And so I'm excited for the things that I've done, but I'm more excited for things to come. So what do you do for fun when you're not working? Uh, well, I have two children, so uh, eight-year-old daughter Gabrielle, three-year-old son Harrison. Um, we're 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 just a go outside and play family. So we turn on the sprinklers. We you know we, we play dodgeball. We um, so for me, I like to just try and enjoy family. That's what I do. I, I spend a lot of time on on the road, and so if I get a chance to just go home and you know fire up the grill and be in the backyard, that that for me is is a vacation day. Have they gotten to town yet? Not yet. So they're they're there. They're back in Columbus. Um, my my children, my husband Dexter, they're he's packing up the house. He's been great in that. He's like, you go, I'll I'll take care of everything. And so um, I may or may not have a house even sold before I get back to town. But he's um, <clears throat> they're they're there, um, getting everything ready, and then trying to get here as soon as possible. <laughs>